Welcome to episode 95. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Ready to take a vacay, but you just don't have the time to plan? Let the agents at 3D Travel Company pamper you and take care of all the little details. Find us at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips booked and traveled by 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Merry Christmas and welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today, we will be paying tribute to the extraordinary Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voices. You may hear the name Mel Blanc and say, gee, I don't know that actor, when in fact, you probably do. Sadly, Mel is no longer with us, but his spirit lives on in the amazing works and voices that he left behind for us. To get us started today, I am going to play you a clip of the incredibly talented and amazing Mel Blanc. This clip is one of my absolute favorite animated characters of all time, and perhaps this cartoon character is one of your favorites as well. Say, this is quite a hunk of aircraft. Hmm, look at that landing gear. Well, I think I'll take the 50 cent tour. And uh, watch out, Doc. That's right. Mel Blanc was the original voice of Warner Brothers' funny, lovable, and very mischievous Bugs Bunny. I can't tell you how many times listening to Bugs as a kid made me smile and buzzed out laughing, and he still does to this very day. If you want to see me smile, just ask me, what's up, Doc? Now, I am getting ahead of myself just a little bit, so let's go back to Mel's humble beginnings to learn about the young boy who grew into a man who would have a 60-plus year career in the entertainment industry. Mel was born Melvin Jerome Blank to mother Eva and father Frederick Blank on May 30, 1908 in San Francisco, California. From a young age, Mel was absolutely fascinated with people who had different accents and dialects. He was so fascinated by them that he began trying to mimic the different sounds as a boy. When he was just six years old, the family moved to southwest Portland where he attended grammar school and eventually attended Lincoln High School. Mel was commonly known to have a group of classmates and teachers alike laughing and in stitches from how funny he was and from how much laughter he brought other people. He was not only known to be a very comical young man, but he was also a very talented musician who practiced violin for over eight years. In June of 1923, at the age of 15, he got his first job as a radio performer singing on KGW's Stories by Aunt Nell, which was a weekday program for children. When Mel was 16, he changed the spelling of his last name from blank, B-L-A-N-K, to blank, B-L-A-N-C, after a high school teacher told him he would never amount to blank, just like his name. In doing my research on Mel, there were some stories that say he graduated high school while others said he did not. To find out which story was accurate, I began an investigation to know which story was correct. After several phone calls, I reached the Portland, Oregon Public School District number 1 and spoke with the senior records clerk there named Steve Hanks. Steve was gracious enough to dig through the old archives to find the information I sought on whether or not Mel had actually graduated. Steve and I discovered that while Mel did attend Lincoln High from fall of 1924 to spring of 1927, his records did not show that he ever graduated from Lincoln High. Despite Mel never graduating high school, it certainly did not stunt his growth in becoming the man who quite literally changed the face of both the animation and voiceover industries forever. Mel was on countless radio shows, television shows, in feature films, and of course, he was the man who would become the legend known as the Man of a Thousand Voices. Mel was the voice of literally over 1,000 different voices, ranging from Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Sylvester the Cat, 
Tweety Bird, Porky Pig, Roadrunner, Tasmanian Devil, and so many other wonderful Warner Brothers characters. Mel also voiced characters for Hanna-Barbera, such as Mr. Spacely from The Jetsons and Barney Rubble from The Flintstones. These, of course, are just a few of the characters from The Man of a Thousand Voices. Mel Blanc sadly left this earth on July 10, 1989, due to cardiovascular disease. But the legacy that Mel left us was one full of laughter, joy, and smiles to be had by all for all time to come. He may be gone from this earth, but he will live on forever in each one of us, and he will never be forgotten. My tribute episodes are done to commemorate and honor those who have gone before us. I do these episodes so that their memories may live on forever in the joy they continue to bring us, even after they are gone. In closing, we will listen to a few clips from the amazing characters that Mel voiced in his career. No, it's duck hunting season. That, sir, is an investigated forever occasion. It's wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. I say it's duck season, and I say fire. Try that again. Are you a friend? Is it safe to come in? <laughs> funny, very funny. What's on your mind, Barney? I'm kind of busy. Oh, uh, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, just passing by on my way to see the doctor. The doctor? What's the matter with you, Barney boy? Well, I got the <laughs> hiccups. What you going to do, pretty cat? What am I going to do? How naive can you get? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play sandwich. Sandwich? Ooh, dooty dooty. How do you play it? Now, first, you step on this slice of bread. Then, I cover you with the other slice, like this. What do I do now, Pudi? What do I do now? Ah, uh-uh, ah, no peeking. <laughs> What did you say, Tony? What did you say? I can't hear you. Ooh! I don't like that game. Uh, I can't remember how Santa said to start this thing, Barn. Well, you just call out the names of all the reindeer, Fritz. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, on Jumper, on uh, uh, Thunder, on Bouncer, and uh, uh, Blunder, on... Uh, 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 Fred, Fred, it's, it's on Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donna, on Blitzen. Hiya, Mr. Spacely. Jetson, our problems are almost over. You mean you found a cog? No, but I figured out a way to get one. Oh, yeah? How? Tomorrow morning, you're going to sneak into Cogswell's factory and take one. Oh, now, wait a minute. Me? Sneak in? Oh, but Mr. Spacely, how? The place is crawling with armed guards. Oh, it can't be done. Don't confuse me with facts, Jetson. Just get me a cog. Good night. Good night. What's that? (laughs) I said good night, sir. Mm. 